Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be solving more trig equations and in this one specifically we're going to be confronting what to do when you're given a trig equation that has multiple different types of trig functions. For example, the one that we're exploring here is 2 sine squared x plus 3 cosine of x minus 3 and this is equal to 0. So, one might necessarily think, well this is nearly in quadratic form, kind of like the last video we did, but this is essentially equivalent kind of to saying that this would be like 2y squared plus 3x minus 3 equal to 0 and trying to factor it. It's not very effective when you have like say y squared and an x or an x squared and a y. It just doesn't work. So there's actually a trick to this one and uh, you see these, these quite a bit. And the trick necessarily is this. Whenever you see a squared trig function, keep in mind that we have uh, Pythagorean identities that are available to us. And so the primary Pythagorean identity, which of course is cosine squared of an angle plus the sine squared of an angle, is equal to 1. Uh, but from this we also derive, or we at least um, would basically imply that then the sine squared of an angle is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of that angle, as well as, you know, we might as well go ahead and list it, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus the sine squared sine squared of an angle, but we're going to pick on this guy right here, this sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared, and the reason why is because if we were to now go back over to this equation and perform a Pythagorean substitution here, we'd say this is the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared of x in for our sine x, uh, you'll notice that then this equation becomes all of one type. And this is actually a, a you know, substitution method you could use for different types of trig functions, different combinations, secants, cosecants, tangents, cotangents, whatever you name it. Um, but basically, uh, now what we can do is this, we can go ahead and write this in quadratic form. That is, we're going to have to distribute this. So we get uh, 2 minus 2 of these cosine squareds of x plus 3 of these plain old cosines minus 3 equals to 0. And uh, we say we can combine like terms. So we say this uh, positive 2 and this negative 3, they combine. So we get negative 2 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosines of x. And a negative 3 and a, uh, and a positive 2 there become negative 1. So now if I'm going to factor this, it's just me, but this is a quadratic type now, trinomial. Uh, but I'd really like for my leading coefficient to be positive. So what we can do is we'll just go ahead and multiply this whole thing through by... Uh, a negative 1. So we get 2 cosine squared positive, and this is minus 3 cosines of x plus 1 constant, and 0 times negative 1 is just 0. So now uh, our method here will be to factor. And of course, if we couldn't factor this, we'd use the quadratic formula, but in this case, I'm just going to let you in on a little secret here, um, it's factorable. So we say, okay, well, first of all, we need to produce this 2 cosine squared up in the front. We've done so. So now we need to produce this positive 1 in the back. Now positive 1, keeping in mind that well, our middle terms here need to sum to be negative, so we'd say like how about a minus 1 and a minus 1. This is easily checked by checking your outer and your inner. You see that your outer there, 2 cosine times negative 1 is negative 2 cosines. Negative 2 cosines. And then negative 1 times cosine is negative cosine, and of course this all sums to negative 3 cosines. And that's what we get for a middle term anyway. So now that we have this factored, we could say, well, then either the first factor, which is 2 cosine minus 1, is equal to 0. That's this guy. Or we say cosine of x. Let me sneak an s in there. Uh, minus 1 equals 0. So solving these, we might as well go ahead and solve it. Uh, sorry to go quickly here, but we're going to go ahead and kick this 1. So kick the 1 and divide by 2. We say, all right, so cosine of x equals 1 over 2. And uh, performing... This little trick here, we say it's not much of a trick, but we say we'll take the r cosine, r cosine inverse of both sides. So x equals cosine inverse of a half. We say what angles would give us a cosine of a half? Let's go look at our unit circle to cheat. We say cosine of a half, that would be positive x values of a half. So we'd say at uh, pi thirds, and it looks like down here at 5 pi thirds. So we get pi thirds and 5 pi thirds. That is, we get pi thirds and 5 pi thirds. But we need to add on all infinitely many coterminal angles, so we're going to add on any multiples of 2 pi, adding on 2 pi, because that is the period of cosine. So now, solving this equation right here, we get this, we say, okay, so cosine of x, if we add the 1 to both sides, add 1, add 1, this is 0 here, not an infinity, but we get cosine of x equals 1, and sorry to skip straight to go, but this would imply then that the angle here is cosine inverse of 1. Let me get rid of that. That looks like a negative. So we say, okay, so where do I get a cosine of 1? It only occurs at one angle, and that's our 0 radian or 2 pi radian angle. Uh, cosine is 1. 
So we'd say, okay, well, then we get 0 and then plus multiples of 2 pi. So groovy, man. That is a very, very quick example of how you would convert to a single trig function using Pythagorean substitutions and then basically solve it as you would uh, something that is a quadratic form equation. Enjoy.